Music is experienced through time, which is why tempo is extremely important. And I find that the tempo can really make or break a performance or a track. So how is it that we find the perfect tempo for a piece of music? In this video, I'm going to cover nine things to remember that aren't so obvious. The last two are ones that personally help me the most. But first, let's cover the basics. Simply going by feel is often good enough because we're able to tell right away if something is a little too fast or slow. But for myself personally, sometimes when I'm a little more nervous than usual or tired, sleepy, hungry even, I feel tempo a different way. So just going by feel isn't always the most reliable, I find. Let's do a quick comparison to speech. Let's say we want to apologize. That's what we want to communicate. And we're going to use the words, I'm so sorry. Imagine saying these words with different tempi, with a different pace. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. So I know my voice was changing slightly from one to the next, but the main thing that was changing was the pace. And depending on how slow or fast I was saying those words, the phrase takes on a different meaning, a different sincerity, and it hits you a different way. And in reverse, if you know more specifically about what you're trying to communicate with the music, the tempo will come more naturally to you. What I think is very helpful to do in the beginning is to describe in words the character of the piece. I'm going to play Chopin's Opus 10, number 3. For me, this music has a lot of warmth, embrace, longing, and also a little bit of a nonchalant quality. I think that comes from the left hand. This rhythm. So this is one of those pieces where most people play it much slower than the written metronome marking. Chopin's marking is 8th note equals 100, which is this. I find that it's a bit dense because there are inner lines happening and this is what perhaps makes people play this at a slower tempo. Also in analyzing the music, I think it's very helpful to observe the harmonic pace or in other words, how often is the harmony changing in the music versus the density of the notes. The harmony is moving at a moderate pace. I wouldn't say that this is overly complex. Let's imagine this melody at a higher register with less notes. I think then this tempo will make sense. So I've been playing this etude for many years and I've always chosen a slower tempo. It was simply something that I was just used to from all of the recordings and performances that I've heard of this piece. But recently, I think there's also potential for the faster tempo and I find it a little more appealing. Maybe not completely 100, but closer to it. It really depends on the piano, but if I also focus on the lilting aspect of it, I start to hear the melody in a different way, in a more casual, flowing way instead of this really heavy, warm, profound way. So I don't know, it, I think these kinds of things shift and there's always room for changing interpretations. There is no one objective, ideal interpretation that is impervious to criticism or impervious to some degree of change and variation. Um, and even some of the greatest pieces of music could do with certain changes of speed, um, general speed or within the, the pieces of music. I really love how Vladimir Ashkenazi is talking about tempo here and interpretation. And one thing to note is that most of these pieces in classical music repertoire don't have a static tempo throughout the whole piece. It's constantly shifting. If you add in rubato, it's always in flux. And depending on the piece and the different movements involved, there is a wide range of tempi within a section and within a piece. Thank you.
This next point applies to some genres more than others, especially if you're playing other people's music. Consider the tradition. This will offer you a lot of insight. And from there, you can choose to follow it or go your own way. You are about to hear a rather, shall we say, unorthodox performance of the Brahms D minor concerto. So this is Leonard Bernstein giving a full disclaimer to the audience before performing with Glenn Gould. A performance distinctly different from any I've ever heard, or even dreamt of for that matter, in its remarkably broad tempi and its frequent departures from Brahms' dynamic indications. I cannot say I am in total agreement with Mr. Gould's conception. So this goes on a little while longer. It's basically Bernstein's long and eloquent way of saying, listen, I don't agree with Glenn Gould's tempo, but I respect the man, which is why I'm here today. And I just think it's very interesting how he appeals to the audience and warns them that this tempo is really against what they're used to, against the tradition. And speaking of Glenn Gould, I really love his tempo choices, not because I would follow them, but because he makes them convincing. And I think that's what matters the most. Your aim is to deliver as your concept is, to be true to your concept, to be true to what you've been preparing, right? But you can be influenced by various aspects. We often forget about where we'll be performing and playing it eventually. It can be influenced by acoustics, um, by the type of the instrument you have, where pianists always have different pianos, uh, by even the state of mind, as I said. Nobody can be totally not nervous. You know, something happens to you when you deliver. Um, and you should be prepared for that too. Say that you're playing Presto by Poulenc. So the notes here in a very dry setting are relatively clear and you can hear all of these changes. I'm gonna simulate a hall with a lot of reverb here, synthetically, and then I might choose a slightly slower tempo just so that I can hear the clarity of the notes. And also I can retain some of the bounce and the humor in the music and not have these notes get lost in the reverb. The next point here is favoring accuracy over tempo to an extent because sometimes this really does not matter as much you can compromise a little bit of the accuracy to have a more exciting tempo. But in general, if you really want a fast tempo, but you're always on the verge of disaster, maybe let go of the tempo a little bit. For example, this etude, Chopin's Opus 10 number two, it's extremely difficult. And although I would love to play it at a really fast tempo, something like this, especially after a page or so, my hands would just get too tired. And in that way, the performance would suffer. So I would just choose a slightly slower tempo. Sometimes when we're listening to a piece over and over again, too many times, how we feel it and how we perceive the tempo shifts. For example, during the first week that you're learning this piece, this tempo feels right. Whereas the next week, when you're more comfortable with it, this feels like the right tempo. I find that especially in front of the computer, when I'm playing back something over and over again, by the end of the day, I might hear it a little differently. So it's always best to maybe switch gears to something else and then come back to it or just wait until the next day and give your ears a break. Another thing that is really helpful is to imagine in the moment that you are someone else listening to yourself play. So it's just forcing yourself to separate the listening side of you and the playing side of you. Get into the habit of self-monitoring. Record yourself on a regular basis, whether it's while practicing or performing. Just document what you're doing and keep those files. Listen to the files. Don't just hoard them and keep them stashed away in a hidden folder in your hard drive. I know it's uncomfortable to listen to your performances back, but do it anyway. It's not my favorite thing, but I do it because it offers me so many insights. So. Do that, consider all of the other things I mentioned in this video, and I hope this was helpful. Let me know in the comments what you thought, 
And a special thank you to my patrons on Patreon. And thank you all for all of your continued support on this channel. Thank you so much, and I'll see you very soon. Maybe a little too slow? Or fast? I don't know. <laughs>